I was once driving down a pass in the Alps. I downshifted to use my engine brake and I really had to reduce speed so as not to use my service brake. I kept changing gear to stay at high revs. I really felt like I was losing time. That was when I really regretted not having an additional retarder. A Renault trucks instructor explained all the advantages of the Voigt retarder to me. It provides enhanced safety on steep hills and reduces brake wear considerably. I was also surprised to learn that this braking aid helps you save fuel in everyday driving conditions too. What's more, there are fewer CO2 emissions, so it's better for the environment. On leaving the restaurant, the instructor offered to show me how efficient the Voigt retarder is, as well as tell me more about safe, rational driving. First and foremost, safe, rational driving involves appropriate driving behaviour. Downhill runs give you the opportunity to drive for free, taking advantage of the energy generated by the weight of the vehicle. You mean by using energy accumulated by the truck? Precisely. The amount of energy accumulated depends on the total mass of the vehicle and its speed, but this energy has to be controlled. You need to avoid picking up too much speed so as not to lose control of the vehicle or indeed break the speed limit. Using the Voigt retarder gives drivers better control over this energy. But if the needle goes out of the green band, doesn't that mean I'll be increasing fuel consumption? Not at all. Your foot's not on the accelerator. So, despite the high engine speed, fuel consumption is zero. Why does the engine speed have to be high? To get the most out of the combination of the engine brake and the Voigt retarder. Don't hesitate to go up to between 2 and 2000 RPM to get the best use out of it. A high engine speed will provide better cooling for the Voigt retarder. The cooler it is, the more efficient it is. What if it's not cooled enough? The retarder loses power slightly for a moment to prevent the system overheating. Depending on the vehicle load, the gradient and how long the descent is, you should adjust retarder power. On very slight slopes or almost flat stretches, don't forget to take your foot off the accelerator to exploit the vehicle's kinetic energy. As soon as you take your foot off the accelerator, fuel injection stops. So you don't use any fuel at all, but the vehicle still continues to move forward. Yes, using the energy it's accumulated. The heavier the vehicle and the faster it goes, the greater this energy, even on flat ground. So the heavier my load and the faster I go, the further I can go, without my foot on the pedal and without using fuel. Yes. Just make sure the vehicle isn't picking up too much speed. Activate the retarder one step at a time in order to gradually adjust retarder power to your speed. Okay. On steeper or longer gradients, you need to anticipate the inevitable acceleration of your truck. Change down right from the start and activate the retarder gradually. When driving downhill, maintain your speed by increasing or reducing retarder power using the five settings. The first setting corresponds to minimum retarder power, while the last setting corresponds to maximum retarder power. On a downhill run, if the vehicle continues to gain speed whilst already at maximum retardation power, reduce the truck's energy using the service brake in order to downshift while keeping the Voigt activated. Right, that's easy enough. Well, yes, with the Voigt retarder, it's now easy to manage the energy accumulated by the vehicle. What if cruise control is engaged? In this case, downshifting and retarder activation take place automatically. What about you, do you use it often? Yes, all the time. The combination of cruise control and retarder lets you run downhill comfortably and safely. That's called integral cruise control. Integral cruise control. Right.
Contrary to what many drivers believe, use of the retarder is not limited to downhill runs. You can activate it as soon as you approach a roundabout, a traffic light, a stop sign, a change of direction, or any other event involving deceleration, whether or not it's followed by a stop. Nine times out of ten, it can replace the brakes. Nine times out of ten? That's a lot. Indeed it is. So there's less wear on the brakes. And the operating cost of the vehicle comes down too. Exactly. The drive line is used much less, so there's less wear on it. But to use the retarder properly, you must anticipate. Anticipate? Yes, you have to pay attention to road signs and keep your eye on the flow of traffic in order to detect any signs of deceleration. As soon as you need to slow down, take your foot off the accelerator. Change down in order to obtain a high engine speed and activate the retarder in successive steps. OK, how does it work with the automated OptiDriver gearbox? Downshifting is automatic, bringing the engine speed up to an efficient deceleration range. For greater comfort and faster action, you can use the Max mode. Right, it's simple. What's more, using the retarder helps manage transport times and provides better average speeds. I can see that it makes for much more comfortable driving. You regulate your pace better, have a smoother drive, and as well as saving fuel, you protect the goods you're carrying. Yes, and the extra comfort and peace of mind enable you to concentrate on driving and on your surroundings. And to anticipate, which is vital to save fuel and achieve rational driving. You've definitely got it. The advantage of a retarder is best measured in terms of safety. With a sufficiently powerful retarder, you can go down the steepest gradients without having to use the service brakes. This means the brakes don't get hot, and that in turn ensures maximum efficiency in the event of emergency braking. In addition, controlling your pace better makes driving smoother, improving your average speed. Yes, regular appropriate use of the retarder is definitely the way to go. It's good news for the environment too. Because the brakes are used much less, you'll be releasing much less harmful dust into the atmosphere. In short, adding an additional retarder improves the safety of the driver and other road users, reduces the vehicle's operating costs, improves the quality of goods transport and helps care for the environment. I'll really have to discuss this with my company.